Hello and welcome to week four's tutorial. I hope you'll enjoy what we have in store for you today. So let's get started. This piece here, this is our dot section. And then we've got our crescent shapes. We've got a large, medium and small. And then we've got our fan and we've also got our negative. So we've got the fan positive, fan negative in large, the same in the medium and the same in the small. Now, these are flexible stencils. You can use them um, with royal icing. If you want to um, spread royal icing over here onto the side of the cake to get your design, you can do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to emboss them onto some Mexican paste. I've colored the Mexican paste with some um, Pro Gel cream and caramel. So I've got some different tints and tones. So before I start on making the flowers, what I've got ready here is the formers. There's um, the dimpled former and the cupped former, and they come with the um, stencils. Then I've got a little mini turntable here, um, a palette knife, and also a good scalpel. This is a surgical one. It's got a nice fine blade, so it doesn't drag when you cut the paste. This is my Mexican paste, and I'm just going to work a little bit of tracks onto that one and then roll that out. I'm using a Corian board. Um, I like to use this to work on. Um, it's nice and robust. I prefer this um, to a plastic board. So I'm just rolling that paste out. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just lift it up a while and take a little bit of the shortening and rub this on the board because what I want to do is I want the paste to stick to the board like that. And then with my stencils um, to make the flowers with the three sizes, I would then just put a little bit of the tracks on the back and do one and the next one and follow that through with the next one. So what I'm then going to do is just emboss that onto the paste like this. And then just take a palette knife and trim away your surplus paste that you don't need. So we do that all the way around and there and take that away. So now what we've got is our paste, which has the stencil embossed onto it. So what I'm going to do is take just a little amount of the shortening, the Crisco or the Trex, and rub this over the top. Now the colors that I'm using, um, these are my color range. Um, this is a old gold. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of the powder and brush that over the top like that and work that on. Now the idea is that you make three petals for the three sizes of flowers and then what I'm just going to do is rub that over the top. Take as much of the luster powder as you can away and then if you just take a small piece of kitchen paper and just rub over the top like that so you've got it nice and clean so with regards to the petals I've got um, a piece of clear document wallet which I've cut and what I'm going to do is take the negatives for each of those. So we'll just put those into place, the small one and the medium one. So we've got that. And then just use the cranked palette knife just to lift your stencil away. And that's the reason why I put the Crisco on the board so that the paste would stick to the board 
when that you, when you take away your stencil like that the paste remains on the base so we just do that with the next one now with our negatives again just a little bit of Crisco over the top of each one. Now when I place this over the top, I can see where I want to have the um, stencil so it's an even spacing around the outside. And you should hear just a little click. That's the stencil sticking to the paste. So we do that and then we do that. So we've got our three stencils actually stuck down onto our paste at the moment. So what I'm going to do next is take a small turntable and just place this underneath like that. I find this is easier for turning. Now don't be scared when you use um, a scalpel like this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it against the inside edge of the stencil as I turn it around. So holding the stencil, um, holding the angle of your um, scalpel like this, I'm going to push it like that and just gently turn the turntable like that. And we do that on each one. So push it against the inside edge and turn around so we've got our three sizes of petal so the next stage is just take your cranked palette knife and just carefully lift your stencil away do that on each one and then Remove your surplus paste. And with your document wallet that I've got here, just lift that up. And then slide your palette knife underneath, like that. You see that you've got that nice shimmer on the um, paste. So we've got a large medium and a small one. Now if you do three petals, which I'm going to do. So before I put this to dry, um, for the very small um, one of the fabric flowers, what I've got is some cling film which I folded back on itself, like this. And again. And then what I'm going to do is to cut just around the edges, like that. So I've got a small circle of the cling film. And there's a large and a medium one, but for the very small one, what I'm going to do is just put the cling film in there and just form that over the base. And if you just take a modeling tool like that, you can make just a little indentation in the center. Just use the scissors to get through that. Um, so you can form that for the very small one. So what I'm going to do is take the former and then just dust with a little corn flour like that. And then we want some Tylos glue and paintbrush. So We'll do the large one first of all. So take that from your former, or oh sorry, your plastic sheet, and place that 
over the former like this and what I'm going to do is just push that one down in with my finger and then the next one goes over the top like that and what I want them to do is to overlap inside take the next one so that one wants to go under that one and over that one so just a little adjustment lifting them in like that so they're over the edge just bring your petals back and then if you take the if you take the modeling tool and just gently rotate that in the center so they're overlapping and on the ridge of here you can see where you've got your petals going down and then if you take a little bit of Tylo's glue just take off the surplus and then what I'm going to do is just to lift that petal and paint underneath like that and the next one and the next one and then just use your modeling tool again just to make sure that they're secured in the center now I'm going to repeat that on the medium and the small so with the medium one there push that down in the center and do a bit more glue and just do the last one and then just reaffirm and bring those petals over the edge and then for the small one just a little bit more glue in there so push that down underneath it's quite a nice radiant design on these um, fabric flower effects and then just take your modeling tool to push that down in the center like that so they're overlapping just put a bit more on that one so we've got our three different sizes like that Hello and welcome to Steve Benison's Sugar Artistry. Um, I hope you've enjoyed our tutorials. Um, I'd just like to tell you about my online store. Um, these are all my cutters and moulds that I've created over the years. They're very innovative and allows you to do more than one thing with my cutters. Um, each of the cutters come with a four colour step-by-step um, instruction um, leaflet and these are the ones that we've done on our first tutorial which is our lattice cutter so you can head over to the website have a browse and i hope you enjoy your online shopping I just wanted to show you a variation on using the um, stencil here. So what I've got is the stencil embossed onto the paste and I'm just going to take a texture wheel and I'm going to mark in between each of the sections and just add in that texture there. And then if we just lift that one up And then place over the negative like this. Use the scalpel there and turn that all the way around. So 
So this is the variance where I actually textured the petals there. And then if you bring those in, like that. Looks really nice um, as a feature side design as well, where you can put a little molding in there, one over, one under. Okay. And then just adjust those. So we've got those like that. And then I will glue those. And with the other one, you can make it into Carla Lily. So what I'm going to do is just to bring the edge over there, like that. Take a small amount of Tylo's glue and just brush it on there. Then if you bring your cone in, like that, just bring it over on the outside and then pop that into the center of your mold. And then what I'm going to do, paste is just a little bit on the soft side, is just pinch the edges back like that, all the way around, and do the same on that one. Paste, roll it into a ball, like that. And then a sausage shape, And I'm just going to cover, color that with a little bit of the gold and just brush that over. And then take a little bit of Tylo's glue, pop that in the center, drop that down. So you've got a Carla Lily or Anthurium, whatever you like to uh, call it. I just leave that in there to dry. So what I've done, I've rolled out the Mexican paste. I've put some um, treks on the back of the stencil and I'm gonna place this over the top and then emboss. So push that down onto the paste. Take a little bit of um, tissue, Let's trim that little bit of paste off there. And then we've cleaned up all the edges. And then when we use our negative, we've got that design here. And the other way is that we're going to take the crescent shape out. Using the scalpel like this, um, I'm just going to push it in there gently and rotate the turntable. So I'm pushing it against the outside edge like that. Do the same on this one. I'm not putting lots and lots of pressure. So I can just take that one out. So a variation, you could have it like this. You could take one out, or on this occasion, what I'm going to do is to take both of them out, like that. And remove that, and then lift the stencil, like this. And then we take our negatives. So I'll just pop that one back in there. So again, tracks Crisco on the back of each one. And that goes over there. That one goes over the large one. And again, just make sure we've got a fairly even piece around the outside before we snap the stencil down. And the same on the medium size one, like that. So just holding that in place and pop the turntable underneath. And what we're going to do now is use the scalpel and I'm going to cut 
on the inside edge and what I'm going to do is just rotate as we go round like that so really it's the turntable that's helping like that so we take our stencil off now with the stencils wash them in warm soapy water take away your paste open that slide your palette knife underneath and then place it on there like that so with this variation I've got the three large ones cut out with the crescent shapes here the medium size one I've got six of those and I've also got six of the small ones I just wanted to show you on this one here so you could either leave the, the crescent shapes in or you can cut them out so taking our former just take the plastic off and then we use the large one first so that's going to go over there the paste is still um, pliable so you can um, move it I like to call this plastic hard so I'll place that one over there as well and then the next one so we've got one that goes over just lift that one up a little bit Put that one underneath there and then just use your modeling tool like that so this area here is overlapping the solid area like that and then I'm just going to take a little bit of Tylo's glue and just lift that and brush under the neath of each one so that can stick on there. Do the same on each one of those. You could use flour paste if you want to as long as it's a nice robust flour paste um, and isn't too soft. Um, when you use it as you can see on here with the Mexican paste it's got that little bit more um, resilience so we've got those in the center there now for the medium sized one what I'm going to do is place that over there and the next one I'm just positioning these at the moment so where I want them to go and that one and then this last one tucks underneath there so I've actually got them in that formation and then again if you use your modeling tool just push that down there and a little bit of Tylo's glue what we're going to do is just brush underneath each one of those petals a little bit more and stick those together and just open that one a bit more there so you've got those just bring them back and then that goes in the center like that so we've got our center flower done and another option is if you take um, the cut former like this, um, we place those in a similar way, like that. So you've got lots of different flower formations um, with your petal shapes, like that. And then that one is also. Um, glued down with the tylos we do that just pop that underneath there and on that one okay and then just bring that back you can use a ball tool on this one where it's cut 
So you've got your flower centre like that. Every house needs a strong foundation. I've teamed up with my former college tutor, Cecilia Young, to bring you over 25 years worth of knowledge and experience packed into this fantastic programme. Within these eight individually assessed modules, we've covered the fundamental building blocks required to take your cake decorating skills to the next level. And that's not all. Each programme is accredited by FDQ, a leading UK organisation for the food industry. We look forward to welcoming you on the Cakeflix Master Programme. So if we just do a recap there, we've got our different flower combinations, large, medium and small, the crescents which are actually stenciled, this one which is cut out, this one which is actually textured. And then if you want to, this is the Carla Lily um, that we did, that could go in there. So you've got like a type of, um, of orchid as well. So we'll come back to those to finish off the centres. We're going to take a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. I hope you're all enjoying today's class. So let's crack on. I'd also like to show you how you can extend and create different textures on the fabric flowers. These are using my mini stencils. I'm going to put over the luster powder like this. And then remove your stencil like this. So what we're going to do is to cut around like that. And we'll just remove that one. So we just remove that paste there. And this one onto the Mexican paste is the swirls. So like that. So just rub that in. And then to stencil away like this. And then cut out exactly the same way with the petal shapes. And this one is the sequin dots. And then the same. brush over with some gold on this one. So brush that in. So we lift that one. And again we would use the stencils like this, the negative one, to cut out your petals. So what I've done is I've arranged those as I've shown you um, earlier into the former. So you've got your um, additional textures, your floral, your spiral, and also as well, your sequin dots. We've created our base for our fabric flowers. So for the center of our flower, what we're going to do is take the paste, roll it into a sausage shape, and then I'm going to cut Three, six, and one for the center, which is seven. And then I'm going to roll that into a ball and then into a teardrop shape like this. So once we've got our seven pieces, what we're going to do is start off with placing them around the center one like that. 
and the paste should be still soft enough so that it sticks to itself. If it's not, then just take a little bit of Tylo's glue and push that, or brush that, sorry, down in between there. And then a little bit more on that one and that one. So what we've got is our flower centre there. So what I'm going to do is just squeeze that down and bring it together at the bottom. So I'm tapering it like that. And if I just cut off a little bit there, and then what I'm going to do is to take the cocktail stick and just put that in at the bottom to bring that around. So I've got it tapered down like that. Now, if you take a little bit of your Crisco, rub it on your fingers and then just gently rub that over the top of your flower center like this. So take that onto the paper and then brush that on the top like that. And down the side like that so I know it's free. This one is fully dry. So what I'm going to do is take some Tylo's glue and brush a little bit of Tylo's glue around here, like that. Then we can take our flower out and bring our centerpiece down in like that. And just push that down gently with your fingers. And at the back there, you can just pull it down onto your the back of your flower so it's like this. Now, if you take a piece of foam sponge, you can then turn that upside down on the foam sponge like that so that it can dry. And if you check, you know, halfway through drying just to see that everything's as you want it. OK, so that's our first flower centre. And then if I take a palette knife, just trim the end. So for the large one, it's about nine centimeters in length. And then what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of the Crisco on that. And then I'm going to brush over with some gold, just along the center bit there. Just brush that down. After we've done that, now I'm taking um, a flat bladed scalpel and what I'm going to do is cut. So we've got one, two, three, four, about five centimeters across that bit. So these are about two millimeters in thickness. So bring your scalpel down like that, cutting all the way through. So once we've cut all the way along, what I'm going to do is just trim the end there and here. Just remove those little bits of paste. And then slide your palette underneath, the palette knife underneath. So you can lift it over. And what I'm going to do is take a little bit of Tylo's glue and just brush the Tylo's glue along that edge there. And then fold this piece over so it's like that. And then if you get the handle of your paintbrush and just push that down like that, so you roll it 
so the edges come together and then pick this up and then what you're going to do is to start to wind it round on itself like this bringing that slightly up around the outside so you've got your ribbon bit just open them up a little bit there and then what I'm going to do is just bring that together so it's pinched quite tightly and then continue to pinch take away the surplus and then start to thin it out a little bit and the bottom bringing it to a taper remove that little bit there now your flower here you don't have to put the um, cocktail stick in if you don't want to you can leave it just like that so again what we're going to do is to put a little bit of sugar glue in the center and then push that one down and then you can just use your paintbrush like this to adjust them where you want them to go and also as well you can highlight a little bit more if you wish so to do the range of centers um, for the fabric flowers I'm going to use one of my um, button um, molds and also one of my ribbon rose molds as well along with some luster powder colors so we'll get the paste ready for that okay so do the mold to do the moldings for the center of the flowers okay this one here is my SB3 I'm just going to put a little bit of Crisco in there and then press the paste in on that one and I just want the center of this one here so we do that and then you've got some smaller ones there for the smaller flowers like that so just push that down and then flex your mold and that little one so if we just get a little bit of powder so that we can highlight those so we can do a little bit of the Super Pearl on that one. And then we use a little bit of gold on that one and the small one. So just work that all the way around. Put that one to one side for a rose centre. This is my ribbon rose mold. You can use it as one piece like that and then join them together. Or if you want to just take um, the feature area as I'm using now, is just take your paste like that and push it down into the rose size that you want. Push that in. And then just flex your mold. So you've got your ribbon rose effect. We do um, another one in there. Just push that down. Flex your paste. And then I want to colour those up as well. So I put them on there. Do a little bit of the super curl like that. So we get those ready. So that will fit down inside of your flower. We'll just try that for size, first of all. Yep. And then you can use a little bit of the 
tie those glue and then pop that one in so push that down a little bit more tie those glue on the top and then you've got your center there just push down so you can use that one and then on this one a little bit more glue pop the center in and then that's the ribbon rose that's going on there if you need to you can just push that down a little bit more if you want it lower down And then just use your brush. So you've got your center and just put a little bit of paste in there like that. Oops we use that uh, goldy one. and then just use your brush just put down a little bit more pressure like that so we've got our different centers um, of our flowers and the one that we did with the cocktail stick in like that which are all now going to dry thoroughly. So having finished all of our flower centers, with the stenciled leaves, just gonna roll out some Mexican paste and a little bit of Trex underneath. So the paste sticks to the board. And then this is our um, leaf stencil. So what I'm going to do is to place that on the top and roll over and emboss so the paste just pushes through the area there and then we'll just remove that piece around the outside. Just rub over the top of your stencil so you've got a very very thin layer of tracks and then we want some luster colour. So we'll use some lighter one there first of all. So we'll pop that in. That's our super pearl, sorry, antique silk, wrong colour. And then we use a little bit of gold, finish with a little bit of bronze. Increase the uh, depth of your design, so we just take away the surplus there so we can see our colour and then I'm going to take a stitching wheel and on this one I'm just going to add a little texture in there and then we remove our stencil like that and then take your scalpel so we can just swivel that around like that. On the end one we can go a bit closer if we want. So we can take away the surplus paste. If you want to you can take your stitching wheel and go down the center of that one and then in between as well and give a center vein like that and put them into the clear plastic wallet like that. So, so these are the ones that I've prepared. I've made some different colors um, and colored them differently with the luster powders. So I'm gonna keep them in the, under the clear plastic wallet until I need them.
Okay, so to marble the paste, what I've done is taken some caramel and just put a few little streaks along there. And this one is the cream. So I'm working that back onto itself like that. And then roll it. Bring it together. Keep rolling. And then what I do is bring the ends in like this and then fold that over and roll again a little bit of cornflour there. And what I'm going to do is to roll the paste out and I'm just going to cut off a little bit that end and that end, put those together. So we've got our nice marbled effect texture there. Okay, so going back to our stencil, this long edge here, I designed that so that you could use that for your design around the base of the cake. So if I'm going to place that on the top, I can then roll over. So I emboss. And cut along that edge there. Just move that to one side. And on there, trim that end as well. And then brush over with your luster colour like this. And then take the stencil away. Gently pull that down like that. Make sure we've got. And then, if you take your ruler, you can either use a little along the bottom. Slide your palette knife underneath. So prepare the next piece and you can go into your plastic like that. So when you've got all of your strips of paste cut, if you place them between your clear document wallet like that, and they'll become plastic hard, making it easier for you to transfer onto the side of the cake. So here's our marbled cake that I've prepared for today um, to put the fabric flowers on. Um, this is a six inch by six inch deep cake, which I've colored with caramel and cream and textured the paste so it resembles marble. Um, and this is what we're going to be putting our fabric flowers on. To put the um, embossed um, spotted ribbon around the base of the cake, what I've done is measured around with a piece of paper like this. I've divided it into three sections, like so. And then I've measured it to 18 centimeters. So this is the width or the length that I want to cut the pieces of the paste to. So on the side of the cake I've made a little mark there with the scriber where each of the divisions are going to be and then I'm just going to brush round a little bit of the vegetable shortening to secure the ribbon. And this goes round the base of your cake like that, it's still plastic hard. And then what I'm going to do is to cut where the mark is on the side there. And then join it. So what I'm going to do is pipe a little bit of royal icing over the joint. Like that. And these are some pearls that I made 
undried. They're going to go over the top. And if you've got any ice in showing, you can just take a little damp paintbrush and brush that away. This is modelling paste which I've rolled out and I'm going to use the scroll cutter just to push that down on the top and just remove the paste. If you just use a paintbrush like that and pop that onto the board. And do the same with the small one. So take it backwards and forwards on the board so that you get that nice clean cut and then use your paintbrush to remove it. Now these are going to then go into some clear plastic um, so that they remain soft and pliable. So I'm going to place them in there so they're ready to use. So I've used my piece of document wallet which I've cut a strip of a very thin coating of treks on the top and then placed my scroll on the reverse side so I can then bring this up and position it where I want to have it on the cake and then smooth over and take that away. Position the next one on and the beauty of this is you can position the scrolls wherever you would like them to go in the design that you would like and also as well you can use both sides of the cutter so you can have a right and a left hand side of the scroll so position where you want it to go so we've added our scrolls um, to the side of the cake and also on the base as well. Okay now I'm going to add the stenciled leaves with a little bit of water just on the back and position them where you want to have them. And what you can do is just bring one edge away from the side of the cake like that. So we add another one there. a little bit so we have our leaves on the side so to arrange your flowers on the cake um, obviously for this tutorial I've selected some of the flowers that I would like to use and I've positioned them first of all where I think they should go and then the one which has got the cocktail stick in, what I've done is made a little indentation in the top so that I can then insert that in like so. So what I'm going to do is to push that one in there. I've taken the royal icing, what I'm going to do is to put a bulb on the back of the flower like this. This is quite a firm consistency royal, royal icing and then what I'm going to do is to secure that onto the cake like this and then they would do that with each of the other flowers piping the royal icing on at the base like this and if you do get surplus royal icing what you can do is take um, any excess off with a paintbrush so I will continue to um, secure all the flowers um, on the cake. My royal icing there. And then if you use a sterile pin, pop it where you want it to go and then just use your pin like that to hold it in place until it's dry and then remove the pin and just fill the hole. 
So now we've got our completed cake with fabric flowers and stenciled decorative leaves. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this week's tutorial and I look forward to seeing you all again on the next one. So thank you for watching. Bye bye for now.